and metamorphosis has happened we all with open faces beholding us in the glass the glory of the lord we are changed that is a transfiguration that happens on a daily basis but you must behold you must behold see there are times when god will keep you on one verse of scripture that means the idea is not to memorize memorizing it is the kindergarten level the idea is to become that verse that's why sometimes you discover you just carry a scripture it said in my name cast out devils in my name cast out devils you are walking and it's echoing in your spirit you are washing it's echoing in your spirit you are eating it's echoing even when you go to sleep the word is echoed it means something is going on egg is about to become butterfly an ordinary man is about to become a supernatural man we all with open faces beholding us in the glass anybody who wants to manifest the glory must become a friend of the world they say until i come first timothy 4 13 give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine verse 15 he said give thyself wholly to these things he said that thy profiting may be made manifest to all in joshua 1 verse 8 he said this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth don't let it depart you are what you say he enters your mind but he enters your spirit when you say it he said you shall mutter it you shall haggai it day and night you shall haggai it day and night seeing that you do what is written therein he said then you shall make thy way prosperous and then you shall have good success every one of us carry the fullness of god's glory you see the beautiful thing is that as you begin different dimensions of the glory begins to manifest for some of us we begin with dominion for others we begin with purity for others we begin with power for others we begin with wisdom but by all means journey from somewhere we all with open faces you know the problem we know all the psychology we know all the physics we know all the chemistry all of that is good but if that's all we know the glory will never manifest he said with joy shall ye draw waters out of the wells of salvation you must make sure the glory in you is revealed because that's the errand of the glory the glory was not put in you to be locked there it was put in you to be revealed but the technology of bringing out the glory is the world that's why jesus said man shall not live by bread alone he said but by every word because when you see the world you see jesus jesus is not necessarily the picture we see around jesus is the world in the beginning was the world the world was with god and the world was god so if you want to behold jesus go to the world as you are beholding the world christ will come out and when you see him you become like him we all with open faces Ten john first john 3 verse 2 say when we shall see him we shall be like him and there are different dimensions that you see part time but you must sit there until you see something the first technology of manifesting the glory is to behold the world thank god for the stories we hear they inspire us but they are nothing compared to the world one verse of scripture is more important than a thousand stories because that verse of scripture is a dimension of god and as you see it you become it we all with open verses beholding us in the glass why do you think the devil is so passionate about showing us negative things when there is a negative news it goes viral why do you think the devil works that way you look around you see naked pictures everywhere he's trying to introduce corruption into you but he knows the way you are corrupt is by what you see is by what you hear so he litters it everywhere you go on the internet and you hear all the dirty languages so that your spirit will eat it because your spirit eat words and as you see those words and hear those words you feed on it so you become corruption he said if you sow in the flesh you of the flesh reap corruption he said but if you sow into the spirit he said you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting this is why those who want to manifest glory we know what to lock ourselves away from there are people that i will never be in their company no matter what they promise there are places i will never go no matter how appealing it is there are things i will never have there are things i will never see there are things i will never hear because i know my spirit is an incubator there is a glory there that i must protect but there are other things that on a daily basis whether i'm tired or not it does not matter i must see them and i must hear them see when i started learning this even when i sleep sometimes i play messages 
and playing worship and then you see that these things are drawing glory out of you they are drawing glory out of you and then you go to a place and you see a manifestation you've never seen before what happened the glory has increased see make sure the glory on your life increases on a daily basis but the way to do it is by beholding is by beholding analyze scriptures meditate on scriptures talk scriptures look upon it hear it and you'll see how your life will change you'll be amazed the level of intellect you suddenly have because there is a level you get to and the mind of christ superimposes your own mind and then even the things you didn't study you know and you don't know how you know you know by the glory because in the mind of christ is all the wisdom of god number two how do you release the glory is through obedience you want to see glory in your life your obedience quotient must be large in john chapter 14 verse 19 to 21 jesus listen these are secrets of the kingdom every christian must know them and practice them jesus was speaking john 14 19 to 21 let's go there quickly he said yet a little while he said the word seeth me no more he said but ye see me because i live you shall live also hmm. what is scripture i remember when the holy ghost told me this scripture i was dying of sickness i laid on my bed almost giving up but god is awesome because even when i thought i was going to die he saw sydney He knew, he knew, God knew I have to stand on this stage today. He knew before, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He knew this day must come. But I was there in despair, thinking I was gonna die. And suddenly a being sat on my bed. I was so scared because of the glory that the being brought. The bed decompressed, but I couldn't turn. And then I heard, because I leave, you shall see tomorrow. Oh, the moment I heard that word a dark being came out of me and left it so see these scriptures are powerful they are not stories they are capsules that contain god that's why you must eat them daily because i leave he said you shall leave also and in verse 20 he said at that day he said you shall know that i am in my father and you in me and i in you what a combination i'm in my father you are in me i am in you that means me you and the father are one this is the technology of divinity this is what god has brought us into this is why we are the blessed of this world the greatest thing that has happened to the world is the manifestation of christians the manifestation of believers in christ because we brought god into human equation we brought god into human civilization he said i'm in the father the father is in me and you are in me and i am in you we have become a complex combination of god and man verse 21 he said he that had my commandment and keep it them he said he it is that loveth me and he said he that loveth me shall be loved of my father i and i will love him and will manifest you see that in verse 20 we are already one but manifestation is not a product of oneness manifestation is a product of obedience if, if you keep my word that's when we will manifest through you so somebody can have god and be sick somebody can have god and be confused because it's not about whether god is there or not it's about will he manifest he said the manifestation is tied to our obedience and obedience in this context is not having do's and don'ts necessarily obedience in this context is your ability to respond to the law of the spirit of life because the laws of god have become a force of life in your spirit everybody who is born again knows everything that he shouldn't do not because he read it but because it's in him paul said in romans chapter 8 verse 1 he said there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so disobedience in the context of the new creation is walking after the flesh if you live according to your flesh you are in rebellion to god 
you may not be fornicating but if you know you are supposed to pray and you don't pray that is flesh i feel like sleeping we don't live the way we feel like we live the way life dictates to us by the spirit and it is in doing it that the life and the power of the glory is manifested he said but who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit he said for the law of life that is in christ jesus the law of the spirit of life that is in christ jesus he said that set me free from the law of sin and death so what we obey is the promptings of life in our spirit is the promptings of life this is why obedience in the new testament is not burdensome it is part of who you are it's like a child who is newly born that child doesn't need to be told eat in the morning eat in the afternoon no hunger we make sure he eats the moment he comes out of the womb the child begins to cry looking for what to eat and nobody needs to educate the child that food should be eaten through the mouth the moment he finds something the child instinctively puts it in the mouth that's the way the law of life works the moment you are born of god the life of god begins to dictate to you your obedience to the dictate of that life is what reveals glory in your life i remember some years ago i woke up in the morning wanted to eat it was like food was a sin and i didn't know i went ahead and ate and i lost my peace the whole day <laughs> lord what did i do i had a dear friend you were the one who told me to leave her i struggled i left her why are you still angry <laughs> i was coming from the place of prayer and the voice of god screamed at me and when god was talking light came out of the wall and i was hearing and the light was coming and entering me and he called the name of this lady that became an idol in my soul he said leave her you will see my power in your life i didn't know that the key to the glory was obedience and that was where my journey of power began six months i was struggling i was struggling i was struggling the flesh is weak that's why we need the help of the holy ghost but when i eventually dissociated i started seeing things happen to me oh I will talk, people will go and have encounters. I will talk people, they will be slain. They will stand up, addiction will die. Too much will leave them. I said, this is not the doctrine I was taught. What is going on here? I didn't know that all I was taught was the proof that God was in me. But to draw God out of me was an experiential reality. And obedience was the key. I never knew it. And God kept teaching me. Months later was when fasting, the, the syllabus of fasting was introduced to me. It was not a church that said, let's fast in January. Life knew that the next level I was about to enter. Fasting was the key. I needed to obey God to walk in that dimension of power. And so I ate that food. It was like I, it was like I murdered somebody. I lost my peace. I couldn't rest. The next day I stood up. I wanted to eat. I didn't see no. When I started chewing, I now felt like I was sinning. What's going on here? Am I supposed to fast? But there's no fasting program in church. All I knew was we fast when church said to fast. I never knew that God will have to draw every one of us to that private corner where he walks with us as a friend. Where he walks with us as his intimate. I never knew. It was on the third day that it dawned on me that God wanted me to fast. And I began a fast for 21 days. It was after 21 days that the body lifted. And I ate for 6 to 9 days. The body came again. And I fasted another 21 days. In that year, for six months, I kept fasting 21 days, 21 days, 21 days. When I finished that fasting, something blew up. I knew the key of power like I knew my name. See, when the law of life begins to dictate to you, be happy. Know that there is glory at the end of the tunnel. The way God brings us into glory is by putting us in a pathway where obedience is demanded. That's why I say when your obedience is completed, he said that's when you will avenge other disobedience because that's when the glory will manifest he said if you love me you will keep my commandment and if you keep my commandment i will manifest myself through you many carry the glory but they can't manifest the glory because their obedient quotient is low they do what they like how they like it when they like it and that's why they can't see god when they need god to manifest there's not one of us here that has more glory than the other all of us carry Christ in us. And so the fullness of God's glory is locked in our inside. It's the measure of manifestation that is different. And what makes manifestation different is not because you are white or black. It's not because we are tall or short. 
It's not because you are male or female. It's because you obey God when life brings laws into your spirit. The third way to manifest the glory is by travail. Is by travail. You want to see glory? <laughs> you must spend time in prayer. Oh, only those who pray see glory. Jesus himself, who, if you read John chapter 1 verse 1, you are going to see the qualification of Jesus. He said in the beginning was the word. He said the word was with God. And he said the word was what? God. Qualification number one, Jesus is God. Number two, he said all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Qualification number two, Jesus is creator. In him was life. Qualification number three, Jesus is what? Life. And that life was the light of men. So Jesus is the animator of the realities of men. Four qualifications. But there was no glory showing forth. The moment he went and fasted and prayed for 30 days, the Bible said he returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke 4, 14 and 15. Matthew 4, 14. And he said the land of Zebulun. He said the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He walked into the temple, demons began to scream. What is going on? He had troubled the glory. It's not that he, that was the first time he prayed, but that was when he wanted to make it public. And the precursor for making the glory of God in him so potent was when he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Demons were screaming. He had not preached. Why have you come before your time? What happened? The glory that was locked inside has been made visible. And demons can recognize it. Men can recognize it. But it took fasting and prayer to draw that river out. No wonder he kept at it. In Matthew 17 verse 2 and 3, he said after eight days, he took Peter, James and John to a mountain. And he said, there he prayed. And he said, as he prayed, as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to blister. Even his garment, the Bible said, began to shine. So Jesus knew the technology of unlocking the glory was prayer and travail. No wonder the Bible said, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So the children we give birth to are not just biological children. If all the children you have are the boys and girls you named, you don't have children. The real people who are parents in the spirit are those who have stayed on the altar until children came out of them. And one of those children is the glory of God that you carry. Paul said, henceforth, no we know man after the flesh. Thank God for the biological children you have. But your true eternal legacy is not your children. They are the things that you brought into creation on account of your intercourse with the Holy Spirit. And every one of us who want to be partakers of the world that is to come, we must be betters of glory. He said, as soon as Zion traveled, Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. He said, for this cause we grow. He said that we might be clothed with our heavenly tabernacle. So Paul too knew the technology. That when we groan in the place of prayer, glory comes out of us. Oh, what a shame. That a man who should walk in dominion is walking as a slave. He said, I've seen an abomination upon the face of the earth. He said, princes are trekking. White beggars are riding on horses. What created that abomination is that glory is not manifesting. Because the part of glory, one of the parts of glory is dominion. If that dominion had manifested, it would have been possible for princes to trek. But he didn't travail. If he traveled, dominion would have manifested. Oh, wisdom is part of glory. But the guy is stranded in the most strategic junctions of his life. He can't make decisions because he doesn't know what to do. He's confused because that elemental dimension of glory called wisdom has not yet manifested. The guy is frustrated. Matters that he needs to speak and power is released. But he keeps begging and talking. Nothing happens. What if glory had manifested? Most of the attacks that come to our life are the platforms for our manifestation. But we need glory to make them platforms. A platform is not this. This is not our platform. The challenges the devil brings to us are the platforms for our manifestation. That's why we testify when we turn things around. But for that to happen, you must be an active participator in the glory economy. Be all with open faces. We must behold. Oh, we must obey. Oh, we must travel. Listen, teach your mouth to pray. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means if you don't pray, you will faint. The opposite of prayer is not prayerlessness. The opposite of prayer is fainting. When sickness comes, it will take you down. 
when the enemy comes, it will take you down. But if you pray, in the midst of crisis, you will rise up like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. The Bible says, when the enemy shall come in, it said like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up his standard. The reason many can't see that standard lifted is because the glory has not yet been tampered. See, as we leave this conference, begin that journey. The Bible said concerning Jesus in Mark 35, he said in the cool of the day, early in the morning, he went to a solitary place. There he prayed. Jesus didn't show up and say, I'm the son of God. I do what I want. No, he knew the technology. He gave himself to prayer. And the apostles also knew this. It's not meant for us to give ourselves to tables. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. He said we will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the world. Because the power we wield is not because we are called apostles.